Hi, I'm Ginny Bauman from Free the Slaves in northern India. I'd like to tell you about an inspiring rescue here that's an example of how the Free the Slaves model is working. The highlight of the story is a dramatic raid on a cookie factory. Police, a boy's father, and activists from our frontline partner group, MSCMBS, rushed to the rescue of 24 children. The boys had been forced to work secretly in the bakery by night and sleep out of sight on the roof all day. A man came into our village and told us it was good work available and that we'd be paid well. He told us to come work with him. We believed him because he said it very convincingly. But when we went there, all we got were beatings. We were beaten all the time. We were only given food once a day. We didn't even care for the food because we would be so tired. Sometimes we wouldn't eat. We would just change our clothes and sleep. He made us work for a few months, and then six months, then eight months, and then suddenly we started realizing that we were trapped. What prompted this rescue shows the power of community organizing to fight trafficking and slavery. Here's how the story began. This is called the anti-slavery chariot. It rolls into isolated villages, spreading the word that slavery is illegal and that trafficking can be overcome if people organize to exercise their rights. It's quite a show with street theater and community discussions. When we go into the villages, they want to learn in an interesting manner. Then they are much more attracted to our work. Then activists ask, is anyone missing? Has anyone been trafficked from this village? They leave a hotline number behind for people to call. That's where the tip about the cookie factory came from. There have been more than 80 tips like this so far and more than 900 calls to the hotline for information and help. <laughs> The father of one boy at the cookie factory had been trying to free his son. He was successful only after the anti-slavery chariot came to his village, prompting a proper rescue with police and a support team. They got the boys out and began to build a legal case against the company. The boys are now free to be boys once again. Activists are working to provide counselling and get the boys government certificates that provide compensation for their ordeal. The boys say they've learned a valuable lesson about the risks of looking for work away from home. Boys in the village ask me if the work and pay were good. I tell them, no, the work was not good. We were not paid and we were beaten. The anti-slavery chariot has reached more than 100,000 people in more than 150 villages so far. And its organizers, many of whom are slavery survivors themselves, are just getting started. They want to reach 150,000 more people. And that is how spreading awareness spreads freedom.